This is what I do in the classroom where I'm like, maybe we should go like this. I'm going to pull it back to the Point it. I clearly don't know how to use this. <laughs> Let's see if this okay. Good deal. Well, that last lady who I just watched, she was so fancy. She was just like, click. You know what's cool? I'm not going to be able to do all of that for you guys. Don't do that. All right. Are you guys ready? I hate to interrupt a conversation. I mean, you know. Thank you for coming. I know it's like really late and I've been trying to tell myself, you're not tired. You're not tired. Like, you can do this. Um, I don't know how long this will take. There might be a lot of time for us to just break out at the end. And if you want to talk to me about what I presented or if you just want to talk to each other, there could be time for that. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, but if you read my description, I, I'm using that as a perfect outline for exactly what I'm covering. But there are two primary gripes with Canvas that I'm going to get into. So I'll tell you about that early on. Uh, by the way, my name is Amber Lemire. I work at Lower Columbia College in Longview, Washington. I worked there for 13 years and basically I'm just a lifer at that institution. Honestly, I was like four years old the first time I stepped on campus there. And I've been teaching for probably seven years. And the projects I'm sharing with you today, um, they're kind of fun to share because they're projects I've been working on the entire time that I've been teaching. But also, they're the only things that I'm kind of scared to show because I'm just not done yet. And so I was struggling with not wanting people to see it. Uh, but I just thought, it's time. I'm using this stuff in the classroom, so I might as well show some people what I'm doing. OK, so let me start with, I love Canvas. I know I don't have to say that, but before you complain about something, I think you should be like, oh, I get it. It's cool. And when I worked at LTC at first, I was a user of Angel. And so when Canvas came, I thought, this thing is really cool. And I jumped on board right when our campus got it. I wasn't even a teacher. I was just working in placement testing of all random areas. And I started learning Canvas right away. But there are two things that make me really mad uh, right now about Canvas. And the first is design. And I actually, it was Todd, right? Okay. I was thinking about that during your talk, and I was so glad you were talking about customizing your space. Because as a creative person and someone who does think about the metaphor of hospitality a lot in my classroom, I just felt like I can't be as hospitable as I want to be in this Canvas environment. And I know that they have their reasons for why it's like that. And some of those reasons are very good, and I'm not always the most sensitive to that. So I'm in, I'm in a little bit of a battle, and I, I admit that. But one of my primary gripes is design, not being able to customize the space to be what I want it to be. And the other one is the gradebook. I'm really frustrated with the access, maybe not just the gradebook, but the access to students viewing how they did on something. And I'll get into the specifics, but those are my two areas. I'm going to fully describe the design stuff and then fully describe the grade stuff. Um, and you guys can let me know if you have better solutions. 
Okay, so I'm trying to get beyond Canvas design, and I'm going to take you through what specifically frustrates me, what solutions I decided to implement, and show you a lot of progress on that, and then talk about or admit some of the challenges that I'm facing with these implementations. So here's what irritates me. The first one is very lazy. I just do not like import that whole process of importing the course content, which it probably sounds so silly, but when you see what I'm doing instead, you'll see why I'm bringing this up. And then trying to go back in and tweak it with all the due dates, all the due dates and all that stuff. And then for me as a person, I feel like, why are you doing that? Okay, I feel like Canvas fragments the big picture of my course. So I'm only seeing, is it doing it again? What is that? I don't know. It's like it switched to play mode. Yes. Uh, it wants me to talk faster. Really what? <laughs> okay, how can I freeze it? Maybe I'll get out of that mode for just now. Okay. You guys are good? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that makes sense, but do you kind of hear what I'm saying with the fragmented view? Like I can't, I can't see my whole class at once. Everything's hidden in these layers. I mean, even in modules, you get this long list, but to me, it's just not visually comprehensive enough because really, it's a class inside of a shell, where I want my class itself to be my shell. Does that make sense conceptually, to some degree? Okay. And then the the navigation that that's very uh, that's very similar. And then also I don't want to have to learn coding to be able to customize boxes and whatnot. Like the I mean I, I have learned a little bit, but I would like it if there was just technology where I felt like a super designer um, and I didn't have to code. So what I decided as a solution very early on was to create just a course website where all of my content is hosted. And I stole it, the, I had the idea because I had, uh, when I was a tutor, an English instructor who I would help tutor a lot of her students, she had a printed, you know, just all of her prompts, all of her handouts, anything that she uh, handed out to students during the quarter, she had bound in a book through the print shop and students would go buy it. And I thought, it's really nice because everything they ever need for the whole course is in this bound book. They had to pay 10 bucks for it. So I thought, I can do that same concept. I can do it online. And then in live time, if things are missing, I can be adding that stuff to my website. So students have this one place they can go where they get everything for the course, and my course is the shell. So yeah, so it's a course textbook. There's design versatility. There are um, built-in patterns, too, like we were learning earlier about repetition and unity and all those different things. I mean. It Weebly provides me with a lot of that. And then I like this. Some people might not like this, but if students are ever in a place where they can't log into Canvas or they don't want to log into Canvas, they can just remember the name of my site and they can go straight there and they can have access to the prompt or the syllabus or the um, resources for learning that I'm providing. And the screen display is better because have you guys had... Uh, how many are using Canvas I mean, at your institutions? Okay, I assume if you came to the Beyond Canvas, maybe that's where you're at. But you know, the student, um, is it doing crazy stuff again? Who knows what's happening? Okay, so students are, the, uh, the app is kind of clunky anymore, and so they're not really loving that. And then they try like typing it into their browser on their phone, but everything is so tiny. So using a course website kind of makes it more real life. Like this is how content should look on your phone. So that's been nice as well. Um, yeah, and then there should be, and this is something I'm still working on, access beyond the quarter. So your Canvas course, you post all this great content, but then the students can't get in there next quarter. It's all gone. And what are they supposed to do about that? Be copying and pasting your stuff into their own so they can save it? They're not going to do that. Where my course content, uh, I had a, a website. It was lemire101.weebly.com. And tutors who took my class over a few years ago will still go there, find stuff, and show it to students. So I just, I love that. But it's just complete open access. Let me show you what some of these look like. This is the first one. 
that I ever did. So it was pretty, pretty simple. And I didn't do a full syllabus on the home page. I just did, you know, outcome. And then I have, uh, this computer is alive. <laughs> I have the, a handful of different assignments. One, we've been learning a lot, I think, this, uh, at this conference about presence. I've always done an about the author assignment or something, you know, like a journalist bios or something to that extent. So I post mine as an example. And then I post all of their essay prompts in these little drop down menus. I think that's so nice too. Everything's like, you know, all clustered together visually for them. And then I post these as the quarter goes along. So uh, my students were doing weekly writing. These are really bad because this is when I first started. Like they're really kind of crazy. But uh, I, they stack. So blog one comes out week one. I post the assignment. They write their own blog and uh, follow along. But I'll show you some other kind of styles that I've tried. So then I upgraded to this, and I, I tried links back and forth from Canvas to my Weebly, kept the about the author stuff. I've tried different menus. This menu is actually awful because most students, uh, as techie as we would assume they are, they don't know that the hamburger is a menu. So I've tried to get away from this. But same kind of stuff here. I'll kind of jump. Let's see. Is there anything good? Okay, that's my most current one, but I want to show you something that I've been playing with. So with this one, all of the assignments um, are drafted out up here. I, I know this is not friendly navigation. I'm getting there. But something that I tried is in addition to having the top level navigation in these websites, I tried having, once they scroll down, they just click a button and that takes them to step two. And that, so there's multiple navigation, or multiple ways to navigate the site. I actually think that's the best way to do it. I just haven't yet sat down and looked at all of my websites and figured out what the master big plan is for how to lay out my website. And then right now, I've had to come to the realization that I need two websites. So th this is where I'm at right now with the website project. I have a handbook website, which is just my learning resources. And this is the, you know, this is what years and years of work has gotten me. It's only this number of pages. But still, I mean, I chip away at it as much as I can. Uh, and the reason why I need the handbook is because I need a URL that will never change. Because, like I said earlier, it's about extending access beyond the quarter. And so I had, you know, Lemire 101 fall, Lemire 101 winter, but then students would try to go back and they couldn't get into my website. So I realized that I need this. And then the other thing that I'm doing with this, I, I know you guys are probably in all other disciplines, but I still just want to share this information with you. Now that this is neutral and it's not course specific, it's discipline specific, I can share this with faculty across the disciplines and, you know, students who aren't even yet college students. So they maybe are interested in becoming college students or college writers. They can access my resources. And I, I can give it to my friend who's a mom who homeschools and wants to know what kinds of stuff we're learning it as college level writers. So I've been developing that as separate from my, uh, from my course specific site. And this is my most updated course specific site. So it has a syllabus on it. It has the drop down with all of the essays they're completing. It has blog, which is our daily writing assignments. It still has the resources tacked into it because, I, like I said, I'm working all that out. Um, and I actually have a contact me because I'm outside of Canvas. And one of the conveniences of Canvas is they can message me directly. So I tried to build in some of those features here, too, as much as possible. You guys can see this is sort of a messy project. Yes, go ahead. Have you bought amberlemire.com yet? I have not. <laughs> Should I? <Yeah. laughs> okay, I'll get into that. <laughs> um, so I would love to answer tons of questions about any of that or show you guys more, but I'm going to keep cruising and just wait until the end. Is that okay? Did that work? Okay, unless you want to interrupt, go for it. So uh, please, please. Accessibility, that's what everybody asks. Well, is Weebly accessible? I'm going to make an awful confession. 
I just went to the DSS office last week to find out because I just was so terrified that my years and years of work Jerk, computer. I was so terrified that years and years of developing this would turn into, you can't share this at conferences. This isn't, this does not comply. And I was relieved to find out that all of the headers and everything uh, worked out swimmingly, you know, very comparable to how a screen reader would go through Canvas. There are little things that I'm having to do some workarounds on. Like, uh, it doesn't always realize if a video is embedded to how to jump to that video and tell the students press play. But our e-learning office was like, there's an easy solution to that. So I'm starting to make those adjustments. And I just wanted to say, Weebly is actually pretty close to um, being a, a complete, completely accessible thing. You just have to make a couple tweaks. The other thing is that it's inconsistent with other course locations. And so what I mean by that is you'll hear people say, and I've heard it, that it's better for students if every class that they get into has some kind of um, consistency, right? So students find stuff in the same places no matter which class they're taking. I guess my rebuttal to that is online navigation of websites has also has a sense of repetition. So students, Canvas and course LMS is new to students, where websites Students kind of have an inherent, um, I don't know if syntax is the right word for that, but they, they kind of understand how websites are laid out if you choose the right template. And I haven't had any trouble with it. One of the things that I'm doing is multiple, uh, like I said, multiple navigation menus. So I still keep Canvas's home base because if students know I have to log into Canvas to do my coursework, I still have them doing that. They don't have to. In my course, they can go to the website. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Maybe I should stop and try to figure it out, but isn't it entertaining? Uh, so, <laughs> anyways, I keep Canvas as my home base. And you can also, in Canvas, you guys know that you can add, um, let's see, in Canvas, you can customize your navigation over here to have, like, at one time it said Amber's website on the left hand side so they could get to it from there too. So I had it here, I had it on the home page, I was writing it on the board in class when I was teaching Canvas Enhanced, whatever it whatever it was. So I've created some workarounds from that or for that. Yeah, it's disconnected from the emails, that's why I put the contact me in there. Uh, it's disconnected from the discussions and the assignment submissions. I haven't found a way yet to avoid having Canvas as my home base. I don't necessarily think that's bad. I just have to figure out kind of how much to put where, really, and think about how they maneuver. OK, so that's, that's my design stuff. Uh, should, I, should I pause for questions? Or do you guys want to stew a little bit? Yeah. Have you ever taken a class that was delivered outside of traditional LMS? Like, what would be an example of that? I haven't space. seen those classes. I wrote it down when you mentioned it in your talk. Uh, I'm just curious because I mean, one of my challenges is always working with people who've never been a participant. I mean, as a student in right. the environment they're working, right? So mm -hmm. you simply can't understand it from that perspective. You just don't know. Right. <clears throat> and I think that I, I mean, I'm all over this. is perfect, but um, yeah. it would be. It would be helpful to, to experience as a student yes. that, that opportunity that exists out there. Right. I, I took a lot of online coursework because I did my master's degree entirely online and my two years of my bachelor's degree, and I never had anything like it. So I'm definitely stepping out in territory that I wasn't, I've never experienced, if, if that's what you're getting at. And, uh, all I can say is that it has been nice to teach it. Uh, I started doing all this work while teaching face-to-face. -face. So really all of this was just enhancement. Uh, so we, we call that uh, Canvas Enhanced. So all the content is online, they can find it, but I'm still teaching in face-to-face -face context. So it helped me to be able to see how they were interacting with the environment. But bringing that up, I should confess, 
I actually went to entirely online this year because I want to figure out can students survive in this environment without my presence in the classroom. So that's, I'm not brave enough yet to abandon Canvas. I actually had to lean back into Canvas more than I have been for the past couple of years because I need to figure out how to give them those supports. I'm hoping to get there soon. Okay, this is probably what inspired me to turn in the proposal because it, it just made me mad. But then I added the design stuff because I realized I'm really, I'm really trying to just get away from the canvas shell. So I was frustrated and I submitted a ticket and I mentioned it in my description because I was using, so how I'm providing student comments and grades is I'll type maybe a little blurb in the comments. I'll use the rubric to help me. The blurb will say, I created an audio comment for you. Go to this hyperlink to listen. And I originally started doing that because my fingers hurt from typing so much and I knew they didn't read at all. So I started creating these audio comments. Here's the problem. So I have an audio comment through a hyperlink, the comment, the rubric, and then there's a numerical grade. So how do students see that a grade comes through? To be honest, right now, right this very second, I'm not sure, but I've, in, you know, last year I was watching my students look at their grades, and some of them are going at it through the grade book, some of them are clicking on assignments, some of them are clicking on the little thing in the upper right hand that alerts them, that tells them something's been graded, or through email, and then they click on it, tell them it's been graded, and I'm not sure where Canvas is at with this, but depending on which way they went in, usually the very first thing they see is what? When, when a grade comes back to them, what's the very first thing that they look at? Just the numerical value, right? I mean, that's my experience. If it's not yours, I would love to hear that. But they look at the numerical value, and then there's a tiny little icon that is some icon they don't know, and they're supposed to click on that to expand a rubric that they don't even know exists unless I tell them, but still, how are they supposed to, they're not going to click on that. And then they were opening up the rubric, and depending on which way they came in, when I was in the rubric and clicking on the boxes, it was filling that whole box with color. You guys have used rubric, so you know that. But then the students, they would look at it and it had no color. And it was just, they had to know based on little numbers in the rubric. And then my audio comments are not hyperlinked. So I have to, uh, sorry, the link is not live. So I have to write a thing out that says, copy and paste this URL below into a browser in order to hear your audio comments. And they're like, why can't I do this? It's just a dead, it's a dead comment space. Imagine if you're not doing audio comments, but you want to be like, hey, you know what would help you with this assignment is if you watch the video. You can't live link that video within the comment space. And so it was really irritating to me, all of these cumbersome things. I thought as an English instructor, and probably as all kinds of instructors, the way that students access that feedback is one of the most important ways for us to give instruction in an online course. So I was kind of pissed. I filled out, I took a bunch of screenshots and I filled out a bunch of tickets and I got e-learning involved and cannabis is just like, it's not my priority right now. So I developed this. Um, and I, it's not amazing, but here it is. <laughs> okay, I went into Google Collaborations. I developed this, first of all. I, I was able to because I knew exactly for this class exactly what I was going to assign all quarter long. So I put every assignment, and then I put when it's due. Sometimes I just have to go in there and fill that out as the quarter goes along. And then I have these qualitative measures. You know, we all have our way. So needs improvement, meets expectations, does not meet, exceeds. And then in comments, I'll usually put click here to listen to your voice comments. And then here are some points. And then I have uh, the opportunity to resubmit. So when I input a grade over in the R&R, &R, that's revise and resubmit, I give them a new deadline. And that's customized for when they get their feedback. So if I type this in today, I just look, OK, what's a week ahead? And then I type in a new due date for them. That's actually really great because then students, uh, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, they say to me, oh, Amber, I cannot make it by that due date. This is in Google Docs. They could actually highlight the R&R &R due date and write me a comment and say, 
I have a thing going on this week. I can't do that. And I say, perfect. Uh, do you want three more days? Let me change the date. But it gives us structure, and it's super individualized to this one student. And then on this document, uh, they it scrolls down, and if they want all this extra information, like what does R and R mean? How do I do that if I want to do that? And what do these meets expectations, blah, 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 mean? Some students want that, some don't. That's why I put it on the second page. So I kind of go over this with them and this way of working in the first week. And then by the second week, the very first quarter that I tried this, it just worked. It was just, it was awesome. Yeah. So where does this reside? Does this reside inside of Canvas or does this reside outside of Canvas? If it resides outside of Canvas, how do you get around profile? Yeah, both. So, and Google Scholar. That is one of the challenges that I mentioned, is that our college said that as long as I have Google Scholar, and as long as I'm, uh, I don't know if I have questions. Okay, so Google Scholar is protected. I'm, it's residing in Canvas at first, because I'm going into collaborations. Awesome. And I'm building it from there, and that also protects me because collaborations will only link that document to their student email. But then that's the other thing I like about it is it can reside in multiple places. So here's where it resides because Canvas is still their home base, but they can make the choice to save it into their own files. And so they can also access it just from Google Drive. They can, you know, pull it up and whatnot, and I can access it from my Google Drive, too. And then the, the other question about the grading piece is that because you're grading it there outside of Canvas, uh, do you guys use Banner? Just are you using the Banner interface as well? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. The reason that because Banner houses a lot of infrastructural things related to students is where the transcripts are. Not every student yeah. uses okay, I see transcripts what you're saying. and okay. where all that stuff resides in, and you have to, you know, uh, so I guess my question is, is that if it's outside of Canvas, do you have to retype your grades into another place at the end of the term? I didn't even think about mentioning this. I have to type them into our instructor group right. that registration right. so that's, what I was thinking. that's the only thing that I use. Oh, you know what? I have your, that's, no, I don't. I, some, some quarters I have typed it into a final grade in Canvas, so that way they see it in two places. But then I realized they were so proficient with using these that I didn't need to do that. Uh, the other thing, though, that you're bringing up that's worth mentioning is that I'm losing some opportunity for data collection. And I, I know that. Well, so. I mean, it's just asking because it, um, sometimes in retyping grades, some, it's easy to make mistakes sometimes. Oh, yeah. If you're not that's one of my the problems. existing system to, that actually would pull yeah. you know, the data. But on the other hand, it's much simpler for the student. Yeah. The idea. Right. And so I want to show you one that uh, is working. Jerry is going to have to edit this because I'm showing you the student stuff. Uh, so basically, the other cool thing is I, when I create that collaboration, I actually for, I learned my lesson with efficiency. I actually make all of them look exactly like the template. And I give the students uh, comment access. But with comment access, access, they actually get suggestions. They have the ability to suggest. So they can go type right over the type your name here. And they type it in, and all I have to do is go in. So they fill it all out. That way I'm not doing all of the this person's name, that person's name. Because <laughs> the first time I did this, I will confess, it took me 10 hours in the first week just to set it up, which was pretty gross. That's No instructor wants to do that. And I think I even had like a, a smaller number of students than I usually have. And so I made it so that they had a little bit of access. And then they, um, yeah, they type it all in for me and get it started. And I just go in and press, you know, XXX or whatever it is. Um, okay. But then I've got this student, and I want to show you just a little bit of what it looks like. Okay. I add in, come on, computer. All right. On one of my students, I, I have a DSS accommodation, so I added a line, and I typed in their accommodation, and I typed in a note to them that said, you know, if this impacts you here or there, so I'll write some personalized messages. Just get a hold of me. 
So I have, um, that's very hard to read, right? I'm so sorry about that. So he didn't need to revise and resubmit those assignments because he got full credit. And so I just put little stars over there to kind of fill that stuff in. But you can see that I'm writing some um, worded feedback and then the click here to listen to your comments. And it just kind of flows the way that you would imagine that it would flow. But the reason why I, I like this so much, I don't know if it's outlined in my slides. It's in Canvas and it's saved in their Google Drive. Oh, this is it. It gives me a complete and qualitative snapshot of their progress. You, you think you get that when you're in Canvas and you click on a student's name and their grade, but even you are only getting numbers. You have to expand things to see your own comments and to see what those numbers translate into in terms of qualitative stuff. So if I have a student coming in to see me, and I just want to know, okay, where is this student at? I might just print out that sheet, and it's all qualitative, and the, the emphasis is on the words and not the numbers. The other thing is, is that it doesn't auto-total. I know there are workarounds with that in Canvas, but gosh, I hate that when students are just freaked out by how their final grade is totaling at the end. I'm more looking at it like, if something says needs improvement, it needs improvement. That's what matters. So focus on those words, and those numbers will follow. And we say that all the time, but if our interface doesn't also say it, then we're not really saying it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're just like, inches away from a Google Doc that is a narrative of their personal and evaluation of their work and your evaluation of their work, where all the text is uh, aerial 12 point font, including the grade at the very end of each paragraph, maybe that you have crafted, saying, you know, this is why your work is great and this is what you can use improvement on. I gave you a grade of whatever it is. And that instead of seeing the numerical grade as separate from the narrative of your, your evaluation, yeah. they're seeing that number as just another piece of the far better and richer piece of evaluation, which is the sentences you construct to, about and to share with how they can improve, right? Right. So on one hand, I love that you got the whole template thing going on, but I'm like, man, you can just get rid of all that and just start writing at the top of the page for the first assignment in yeah. the paragraphs. So, yeah, and I think that. it's going there because uh, my the I've, I, and this is just me in my process, but a colleague next door went to contract grading and I, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is about my brain. I just haven't been able to get there quite yet. But I feel like this is my step to get there. And eventually, it doesn't have to look so much like boxes. It still looks like a grade book. So I kind of hate that. But I love the idea of them having a more just purely qualitative assessment of their work overall. And uh, conversation. So I've always heard, you know, that we want students to have conversations with us about their grade, you know, to be assessing themselves. We're questioning our assessment and having those things. I've had that happen organically, but it's not built into my interface. So I really am hoping to figure out how to get there soon. That's why I wrote opportunity for conversation, because like I said, some students will highlight my stuff and leave comments. Uh, a lot of them leave really fun comments like, Oh, your recording made me feel so wonderful. Thank you so much. I was really stressed, and now I just feel proud of myself. So that's obviously the the reward. Um, the challenges, yeah, the the Google Scholar accounts. So if your campus doesn't have Google Scholar, that can be a challenge. Very very inefficient. Like I said uh, at the beginning, I um, spent ten hours setting it up. And you can imagine if it's not set up right, how awful it is to go like copy and paste and reformat cells of that my my way of how I set this up. It's pretty obnoxious. Uh, and I know that a lot of people have better ideas than me about how to take those cells and make them auto calculate because they know about all these apps and add-ons. And I've just been really busy setting it all up, so I'm not there yet. But I hope maybe I can figure out some of that later. Not a lot of people are ready to preset their entire assessment for the whole course. Like I said, I switched to entirely online, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to assign each week. So I had to go back to Canvas Gradebook for now. 
but I think next quarter I'm going to jump back into using these Google Documents. So I want to show you another thing. I realized that a greater challenge with all of this, because anytime that you step outside of what the, the faculty member next to you is doing, you do put that burden on your student of, they feel like they know how to be a student at your college, they know how to work online, but if you are like, go here, go there, look at this thing, save that in your Google file, it becomes a little crazy. This is very rough, but I hope it will just inspire you to think of what you could do better. Uh, one day I went back to my office and I spent 20 minutes and I drew this picture for my students. And this, this, like I said, this is very raw, but I thought someday this will be a beautiful infographic and it will make more sense uh, to my students. But basically I drew a home and I said Canvas is your home base. And when you get to your home base, you're just going to get these updates. I'm going to have to show you at the same time. They're better now. These are old. But you're going to get these updates that say week one of 11, here's what you should be working on. Okay. So go to Canvas, your home base, for the here's what you should be working on dot dot dot. Also, when you're in Canvas, you can get to your inbox and check your email. And if you need to come see me in person, here is my office's AAR 147. I'm in there these days and these times. And then I showed them that also in Canvas you can get to tutoring. And in Canvas you can get to people. And I made it cheesy and drew stick figures and wrote a little hey bubble. And then up at the, um, coming down from Canvas, I told them Canvas is also how you can get to my website. But then I put the address in case they don't want to go through Canvas. And I told them what's on my website. Syllabus, all of your assignments, your learning resources, and another way to contact me. And that just comes back to me. I'm trying to like, you know, show them the web of how all of this works. And then this is kind of just dropping a lot of stuff on you guys, but uh, another presentation that I've done before is how I have a website, my students have websites too. So if I have, uh, you need to write this essay, well then they actually publish that essay on their own website. So it's kind of a mirroring system that I'm doing with them. So I told them, you know, then you're going to publish that on your own website. Publish your assignments here. But use Google Drive over here to kind of keep drafts and keep them rolling. And then submit your assignment, submit your website address once. That's another little fine detail. Uh, when they type into that grades sheet, they give me their website address. So they never have to submit anything again all quarter long in terms of essays. Yeah. Do you have a space where I can, um, any student can go see all of their classmates' work? That is something that I always envision. <laughs> it's not as, okay, so how I envision it looking is that they would design their own icons and I would just create a page where it's like everyone's website. How it looks right now, because it's been quick and easy, is uh, a discussion forum where everybody just posts their website. But you do, you do encourage them to go look at their page. Oh, they have, it's okay. required. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. I want to get to the place where they actually reply to students directly on their own websites. The problem is managing the grading of that in an efficient way. I haven't figured that out yet. Because then you have to go and like, yeah, it's not like I can look at this student and say, here's all the replies that they made. I have to do it in a little bit broken up way. I have to go. Yeah. Just the okay. And, uh, Thank you. Some really good examples of classes similar to this. There. Okay. It's just so far advanced. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Yeah, what were you going to ask? I was going to say the one way I got around that because it's so cool. You're talking about Weebly. I love Weebly. Um, one of the ways that I got around that per course, um, I mean, students would create their own little avatars, you know, and with their names listed by it, and I would have one page within a course dedicated to each of them, and when they would send me their yeah. links, I would just have those avatars attached to their links, yeah. and so all you have to do is, they could, and the students could click on each of their other's links to look at their right. sites, and what they were building in there, because what we use Weebly for is to build portfolios. Right, and that's and, what these are. And so students would have like 12 courses, it's tabs, mm -hmm. and each course would represent, um, well each tab would represent a course, and they mm -hmm. would have lower pages within those. So when they left, I was in teacher education, 
so they would have a whole portfolio yeah. to provide to a principal. This is all their work they've done all four years of college. Right. So um, I. Yeah, I, I like that. that in my. Uh, I, I'm gonna work toward the uh, post a page that has all of their stuff specifically mm -hmm. next quarter because in the 102 class that I teach. They act as journalists and they post their own article, and so I thought it would be nice if it even just looked like a, like all of their headlines and whatnot kind of showing up. If your school buys the Weebly Enterprise version, yeah, it's super cool. You yeah. can open up a heck of a lot more too. Good to know. Yeah, and that yeah Weebly and all that is its own, I mean that's its own discussion of all the benefits of having students make those portfolios, but. The sharing is huge. The fact that students are proud of their work and they're excited to show it to other people. And I've had students share their work and then they're not necessarily leaving blog comments on each other's, but I've seen family and friends leave blog comments on their work, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes leave it on the things that I'm posting as well. Okay, so that is how I went beyond Canvas. That's all. That's all I have for you guys. Yeah, go for it. Uh, one quick question. So you mentioned at the beginning about uh, you didn't seem to like the importing of class yeah. on Canvas. Um, and can you speak to that? Yeah, it's really me. But like with the website, there's no importing. Everything is just ready to go. If that makes sense. So I can um, like let's say I want to update a page in a okay. Let's say I know that I want to update a certain essay prompt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to think about, if I'm only using Canvas, to go into the most recent time that you taught that class, update it there, and make sure that when you teach that class again, you import it from that exact show. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think so. Whereas... I mean, when you import the class, you mean, uh, would you have... I have... So I, I teach English 102. So in Canvas, I have multiple iterations of 102 on my menu. In okay. Weebly, I have one. So I'm updating my 102 class right. in a constant space that never it never has multiple iterations. It's just this is my most current, my best version of this class. Where with Canvas, I have to remember, okay, what's my best version? Unless you are managing your processes where you have a master copy of your class, you're probably good at that. Okay. See, I just thought of that. <laughs> but before I was like, that's annoying. So that's what I meant. Sure. Yeah. And then, you know, the the access issues. Like if I have these resources that I feel like every student should be able to have access to, like I've been working really hard on these five basic comma rules and I've been adding videos and examples and um, all kinds of stuff. I want a student to have this all the time. I don't want to build a page in Canvas that's, you know, limited time offer. I want them to have it all. So, yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, that's awesome. Okay. Just the other thing too is that an adjunct instructor would have full control over their stuff or something like that. So whereas they wouldn't want their stuff to be imported by the you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool man. Thanks, my <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. Yeah. I use that with all my uh, graduate students. Uh -huh. the 
came from before. Yeah. And it, it works so well. When I was a graduate student, they made us do websites and Google sites. We were so easy. Yeah, we were very easy. Great. Google sites was mean. But uh, I have a funny story about Weebly. Maggie, you'll maybe appreciate this. My mentor instructor, Joe Green, he's retired now. But he has his own printing press, basically. Like this. What is that? What is it? What does he have? P's and Q's press. And it's all of this, like the fancy letter press and fine book binding and all of that. And he gave me a new making websites. And I made a website for my thing, uh, my. And he was just tech. And so I told him, oh, Weebly's so easy. And he got in and he was like, and I was in it kind of just emailed with me. And so uh, they're both retired. And he told me, oh, I'm so excited. My website's up and running. Thank you so much, Amber. Well, then one day he shows up at my office and he's like, yeah, I have this t shirt for you. And it's a Weebly t shirt. He goes, where did you get this? Apparently they contacted him because they loved that he was so non traditional. For their products, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Will you come to New York? <laughs> oh my and gosh. we'd like to make a video about you." And he told me, the whole time I kept telling them, "No, you need to talk to this girl Amber because she's making all of her students do a pretty big website." They didn't turn. Oh really? That's about me. Yeah. But they, he told me that he parted until 2 a.m. with all the Weebly people. Oh my god. Absolutely. And all I got was that t shirt. I mean, <laughs> no, but they made a really beautiful, uh, like, three to five minute documentary about him creating wow. the website. Because him having one of it, so. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, yeah, it was really pretty. And that's cool, you know. Yeah. Turn them on to the teaching. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was fun. She said you had issues, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's okay. I don't know what was going on. We can hear the loud. It was, was mommy through my slide, and then... We're using Google? Yeah. Okay. We had an issue with Google on a couple of them, so I'll, okay. I'll, have to, I'll check that out this time. See if I can okay, use right. it. Yeah, I just can't use it. I hate it when we see... I wonder if there was interference with other yeah. Other dimensions. Other dimension. You never have the other dimension. We're not going to do it. see Mary, I'm going to try and catch her for a second before we can catch it. Yes. I'm going to just go and catch her. In the past, haven't you usually typically with someone? No, I or I co-presented twice, but I've done it by myself only three times. Yeah. Maybe it was Lucas Myers. I think it was. He's like a younger biology guy. But one time I co-presented with four or five other people. Yeah. So those two times. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I feel like a lot of people here are familiar. Oh. And Next year, Vancouver, and then Boise after that. Yeah, that's fun. I, Boise was the first one that I went to. Yeah. Okay. This was kind of a all inclusive of all the little mini, all the little presentations I've done leading up. Right. It incorporated all my tricks again. Thank you.